All right then, hello friends, I'm and yep, we're back with another video in which I'm going to show you two must-have applications you must have in your Linux system. So right now I'm using Fedora 42, it's just normal and maybe the most simplest and cleanest Linux distribution out there. Besides such, and here the two applications you can have are from Flatter. You can easily access Flatter from the, the GNU software application or you can just install Bazaar. Yep, there. This is another best way to download applications from Flatpaks and Flatter. Alright then, so let's start with the most important application you must have and that is Extension Manager. Now you might think like, yes, there is indeed an Extension Manager. Let me just show you. You see there, which you normally get out of the box and you can easily download it or install it directly from your know, terminal and other places. But then we have Extension Manager. This is a whole new deed. Well, let me just show you, shoot down. So this is the extension manager and it has one extra feature which is no must have. And that is the browse feature. On normal extension manager, you can only customize and change settings of the downloaded and pre-installed extensions. But you cannot directly download extensions from that application. For this, you have the extension manager. Now here, let's say I want maybe a clock. So I just search for clock. There we are, we have a lot of them. Fuzzy clock is maybe the best here, which allows us to, you know, customize the GNOME shell. Right now, I'm using Blur My Shell as my default, you know, layout. Like, Blur My Shell actually is the source of this beautiful and amazing desktop. And we have a lot of settings to install. Thanks to that, we have also Dashdog Blur as well, Overview, but then we have Panel. Let me just show you. There is a huge difference. And that goes for all the other extensions you must have if you have a GNU desktop. Now, I know this was a short one and it is indeed a must have. The next application is here. This is volume control, but its real name is Pavu control. Let me just spell it out for you. P-A-V-U control. When you press enter, there it is. Volume control. In order to install it, you just have to, you know, download the seed packets, go to DNF install. And it's going to install it directly from the repositories available on all the repositories, whether it's Arch, Fedora, or Ubuntu. What, you know, you might wonder why it is important. Well, this is indeed the control center for all the audio devices you have. For example, we have the paybacks. You can actually change paybacks of multiple applications here. Then we have recording. Right now, I'm using OBS. And we have output devices. Well, I do have my headphones on, and that's why it is also connected. And then I can choose which microphone I need to use as my default. Right now, I'm using my laptop's microphone as default. I don't want my headphone to get into headset mode. And then we have configuration. This is indeed not the most important one. Most of the time, you have better, even higher quality of audio playback profile. But you're just not able to enable it by default. This is literally one of the best things you get from Linux. On Windows, you need to install a dedicated software, which is maybe Dolby Audio. That, you know, allows you to enable Dolby Audio, virtual surround, spatial sound, all the stuff like that, you know, 3D surround sound. Well, you can easily enable it directly from here, from high fidelity playback. Maybe this one, AAT, or if you want a really, really nice and crisp audio. And if you have that kind of audio device, you can go for SPC XQ as well. Now, we have had headset mode these are the modes when you're using the microphone of your headphone but since i'm not i'm just gonna go with this one and you can easily change the codex by yourself like this or this it's gonna easily configure everything by itself while preserving all the other settings so you you will not end up messing things around and you can also take you know see the things which are actually going on here as well you can choose for sound input here which i have three of them now you might wonder why well, since I've enabled a dedicated one, which is the High Fidelity AAT, now I can easily go to the highest quality of microphone and sound simultaneously. While on the hands-free one, your sound, the output will be sacrificed in order to make the input better. And that same applies to the output as well. Yep. And now let's move to the last and maybe a better one. Like, okay, there's something, maybe a glitch. I don't know why, but Blow My Shell is now transparent shell. I don't know why. Let's try it again. Now it's better. Now let's move to the last and maybe foremost the most important application, which is going to be a must-have if you want to record your screen. 
Now on GNOME and KDE, you have this. This is the GNOME Stream Chart Utility Tool, which you can also use it for reporting stream. But the quality is really bad and the format is made mostly WebM. Now it does use GPU, but the quality is going to be really bad. The video is going to be choppy. And in order to fix that, you can either use OBS Studio like me, or if you want just a simple recorder with everything out of the box, just go with GPU Screen Recorder. And this is actually maybe one of the best alternatives to NVIDIA's official screen recorder, NVIDIA Shadow. Now, now right now it is using my integrated GPUs. So, like, it's possible because right now I'm on balance mode mostly. Yep. If I was on performance mode, it would go on to NVIDIA. But it's better as well. Now you have the option to just go with a simple view through which you can add output devices, input devices, video quality, you know. For someone who doesn't know much about this, but if you do know your stuff, go with the advanced option and actually make things better. Let me just show you how. So, for example, right now I have my device input, which is going to be the default input, or I can choose which mic I need. And if you also want to record desktop audio as well, just add audio device, make it input, another one output. There we go. Now, for the audio codec. I prefer Opus because it's widely available, it's open source, you can use it everywhere. But AEC is also awesome, but in, if you need to edit videos, go with Opus. Now, in order, in order to make the video actually crisp, set the video quality to constant bitrate. And actually, you know, like it depends on the, uh, the amount of storage you have. Let's say if you can go for like 10 GBs for 10 minute video, just go with 50 pulse. This is literally awesome like this PD quality is just top notch or if you have more just go with a hundred thousand and then for the video codec i prefer h264 best or well if you do want to go with hdr i don't know who would want to or well 10 bit is even better so you can go with that now let's go with color range limited is better frame rate just you know i have a 144 hertz display i can go with 120 fbf but it's gonna be really heavy just Stick with safety. Then frame rate model, just go with constant. And there we go. When you go to record, you will have another menu where you have the shortcut keys. Thank you. And then we can just, you know, set shortcut keys ourselves, the place we need to save the video and the continuum. You do not get so many options in any screen recorder. Like, no one. Even in OBS Studio, if I show you my own setting, right now I'm using NVENT, which is, well, NVIDIA GPU acceleration. FFmpeg PCM. I am right now on 50,000, a little medium on storage, but I am at the highest top notch quality and all. And that is why my videos are so crisp. But this one is even better because you get the right formats with the right quality, the right framework. But that's not the only thing. The reason I was telling it was actually the best alternative to NVIDIA Shadow Play. If you don't know what Shadow Play is, it's a game screen recorder. For. So let me just show you. And there we go. This is it. Just like in video shadow play, you have the instant replay, record and live stream as well. Yes, you can do live stream. And then you have the new UI to set up your screen recording. Nice. Well, let me just show it blue there. Keyboard shortcuts and all the other stuff. But in order to actually customize the settings, like, you know, for the first time, you will need to get back to this old UI and set things up. After that, you can just switch to the near UI at ease. And then you have all things out of the box. You can easily record or live stream or just have a screenshot like this. Yep, it is indeed a really handy application which you must have if you do have some work with this video recordings and screen recording. But still, if I need to just go with screen recordings, I always prefer this. This is actually pretty simple and good look. But when I need to actually record a video, I'm gonna go with OBS. But if I need to record a video on the go, it's going to be the GPU screen recorder. And with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And I'll see you next video. Till then, I'm on signing out.